<clears throat> Hi there, and welcome to another one of my video Bible lessons. This one is about salvation. So, um, and it is an important topic, so I'll get started. So when God's word first comes into, in, into you, Satan immediately tries to steal it. And our first scripture today comes to us from Matthew 13, verse 19. That's Matthew 13, verse 19. So when any, anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. And this is he who receives seed on the wayside. So Satan can only do so if you don't understand. And that's why you need to comprehend what takes place the moment you accept the Lord. Understanding prevents the devil from taking out, uh, uh, take, taken out of your salvation benefits. Our next scripture comes to us from Romans 10, verses 9 to 13. That's Romans 10, 9 to 13. That if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For, the, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who can who call upon him. Is it the 13? Yeah, 13. For whoever calls on his name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. So have you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead? Are you a whosoever? Who has called on the name of the Lord? And if yes... Then you are saved. You are saved the moment you sincerely committed your life to Jesus Christ. The truth of his word instantly came to pass as you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth. Let's see here. Let's see, um, John 10, 28. Oh no, yeah, John 10, 28 and 29. I give them eternal life and they, um, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them from my hand. My Father has given to them me, uh, me, uh, given to them me, and is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them from my father's hand. So in your good hands, so uh, so we are in his good hands now. Since you have committed your life to him, he will keep you. And that is a good thing. Second Timothy chapter one, verse 12. That's second Timothy chapter 12, verse uh Chapter 1, verse 12. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. The knowledge from God's word helps you comprehend what took place in your life at salvation. You began an internal relationship with the most wonderful person in the universe, Knowing and following him will bring you unspeakable joy. Salvation isn't just going to heaven when you die. God wants you to start experiencing your salvation benefits immediately. This requires knowledge from his word. And as you <clears throat> understand and act on that knowledge, then you will begin to experience the benefits of your salvation.
Our next scripture comes to us from 2 Peter. Let's see here. 2 Peter. There we are. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. That, <clears throat> that 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that appertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which had been given us exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these you may be partakers in the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So the knowledge of God gives you access to his promises believing and acting on them you will partake in his divine nature this means you will experience all of god's love joy peace health deliverance and prosperity and that's already in your spirit now by christ jesus as your thinking changes to line up with your born again spirit your life will too your whole outlook will change as you grow in the knowledge of God and his promises. And this is called renewing your mind. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. That's Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is what is that is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. The way you think must match your born-again spirit. At salvation, your spirit became an entirely new creation. Our next scripture comes to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if, if any is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Your born-again spirit is always in agreement with God. The world... Uh, let's see. He's only, the world will, re, will renew... Let's see. <laughs> the word will renew your mind to what's already happened in your spirit. God wants you to think and act like him. But submitting yourself to his word, your life will change like a caterpillar transforms into a beautiful butterfly. Don't allow worldly pressure, uh, pressures to squeeze you into an ungodly mold. Renew your mind and be transformed by the knowledge of God. And your life will increasingly reflect Christ Jesus. Some people don't understand the spiritual nature of the radical change that occurred when they committed their lives to Christ. For example, many received Jesus in jail because they are desperate for a change. Uh, change. They find themselves in, but yet it, they find themselves in the same cell, wearing the same clothes and eating the same food, and discouraged by the lack of immediate outward transformation. Then they incorrectly conclude that nothing really happened at salvation. And because of this, many never go on to renew their minds and enjoy the benefits of salvation. Your body and soul, which is your mind and emotions, didn't change at salvation the way your spirit did. Since you cannot touch your spirit, God's word is the only way you can know what has happened within. Our next scripture comes to us from John 6, 63. That's John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit who gives us life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. 
faith is simply trusting what the word has says happen in your spirit more than what you see in the natural. Feelings change, but the truth doesn't. And if you are genuinely committed your life to the Lord, the truth is he will always honor that commitment. And we will never deny nor and he will never deny nor leave you. Our last scripture comes to us from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. That's Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Your relationship with God is secure. Whether you felt anything or not, radical change took place in your spirit. And you're not a brand... And now you're a brand new person. Trust that God's word is true. So that is my lesson. Um, and if you haven't accepted um, the Lord Jesus Christ, you can talk to me about it. And I will um, talk to you talk to you about um, God and I'll pray with you. Um, or you can talk to your, or, and if you do go to local church, but you haven't really accepted God. Um, you can talk to a pastor. You can talk to a Christian friend. and you, Or like I said, you can read, reach out to me. I am always willing to help people. So with that, I mean, it is a really important thing, uh, especially in these times, to, uh, that you do accept Jesus in your, into your life. Um, so I, I do hope um, that you do um, accept him as your savior in your life, especially during these times. Um, and I hope you guys did have a little bit of a good Easter. Um, we, we just did a Zoom with my family uh, because you can't get together with anybody, so we just did Zoom and chatted for a little while. So it, it was it was good uh, what it is. So uh, with that, I will leave you guys, um, and you can feel free to comment. Or and like I said, if um, and if you do go to church, um, you can always talk to a Christian friend, or you can talk to the pastor. I'm sure they'll direct you to young adult groups. There's you know lots of groups and that kind of stuff, and and they might eat, and might give you like a reading plan and that kind of stuff. I can suggest um, there is a free Bible app that has different reading plans on, um, on it, like in little devotions and that kind of stuff. So you can, um, and, and it's free. And there's audio um, versions if you're not the strongest reader. So it, it, that, that's a good thing. Um, and it's a great tool. Um, I, I use it all the time. So it, it, it is a really good tool. I recommend it for you guys. So I can't, I can't show you because it's on my phone. So, <laughs> so um um, so that's out there for you guys. Um, so, so um, if if you're looking for a correct version, I always say um, just whatever works for you. I I don't have a a good I don't have the right answer for everybody. I use King James, New King James, and um, so so that's what I use. That's not for everybody. Just uh, my answer is find what works for you and how God and let God speak through, you know, what you're reading. So not everybody likes New King James or Old King James. Um, some people like New Living. Some people like the NIV. And I'm, I don't have anything against those. It's what, it's just what works best for you to read God's word. So, that's what I have to say about that. Um, about finding what works for you. So, so with that, um, hope you guys will have a good day, and God bless.